Hey everyone, welcome to another Power Cards video. This time I'm going to be going over the new uh, PCM Helper or Power Cards Macro Helper that is a uh, component I've been working on to automatically generate Power Cards for a lot of different situations in the game so you don't have to create a zillion macros for everything your characters and your NPCs, your PCs can do. So to show how this works, I'm going to set up a brand new game here. Um, Give it a name. Uh, this system requires the 5e uh, OGL character sheet, and I believe that's all we need to set there. Create the game. Now we need to drop into game settings because the other requirement besides the 5e character sheet itself is that you have to have advantage toggle selected for the role queries. Uh, that's because the uh, templates and macros built into the system use that value to determine um, what kind of dice they should roll when a card is generated. And uh, I'm not going to change this in this demo game, but I, I use bar 3 for hit points and bar 2 for AC. I'm just going to leave it like this for now, though. And then finally, the API itself. I'm going to jump back to the settings and API script. Now, at the time I'm recording this, uh, Power Cards has been updated to uh, 3.8.11 on the one-click install, but PCM Helper has not. So I'm going to add Power Cards to one-click, and I'm going to go ahead and paste in the current development version of PCM Helper. Uh, hopefully, by the time you see this, it will be available on one-click. And that is all we actually need. Uh, I will say I use um, Chat Set Adder and Token Mod in my games as well. And if you are adding PCM Helper to an existing game, uh, there are a couple of nice macros. I'll link them in the Power Cards thread that will go through and set that um, advantage toggle on all the uh, characters that already exist in your game. So let's uh, pop back over and launch the game. And this will just take a second and it will come up to an empty uh, Roll20 game. Now, the idea is uh, we've got nothing here right now. We've got no macros. We've got no templates or anything. But if we go to the chat window and run PCM setup, this is going to create the uh, handouts for templates and replacements, and it's going to create a bunch of macros for us to use. So we run that, and then check over our macro tab. We see we now have a uh, bunch of macros here, and if we look in our handouts, we have two new handouts, a power card replacements and a power card templates, both with PCM helper as the suffix. The way uh, power cards works now, you can have any number of templates and replacements files, uh, as long as they start with power card replacements and power card templates, it will just string them all together and uh, you split things up nicely if you have multiple uh, systems in place. So uh, I usually put the NPC action and legendary action on my bar. Uh, when the macros get created, uh, they'll be the ones that are player oriented will be uh, set to all players and as token actions. So, how does this work? Let's start with NPCs. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just search for um, Goblin. So anything you drag out of the compendium, and it will pop up. Uh, if we look at his character sheet, the Goblin has four actions. Multi-attack, a scimitar, a javelin melee, or a javelin ranged. So uh, if we open up or we select him and let's bring somebody out for him to attack as well. And all right, so if I click on the NPC action button and select the target, we'll get a drop down list of what attack from that list we just saw would you, this goblin like to use. So we'll select Scimitar and then we switch back over to the chat window and see that uh, it will generate automatically a power card. The goblin rolled a 17 versus an armor class 17 and hit for 7 points of slashing damage. 
So we can see no matter what uh, we pull out of the compendium, Drake is not there, I guess. All right. Let's search for a dragon. Let's bring an adult black dragon into here. So this has quite a few more abilities. Uh, he'll have a bite, a claw, a tail, a frightful presence, an acid breath. He's got legendary risses, or sorry, legendary actions. He's got detect, tail attack, and wing attack. So just like our goblin, uh, behind the scenes, PCM Helper has created the necessary attributes on the dragon. And let me pop those open real quick so you can take a look at what it's actually doing. If we look at the attributes tab, scroll all the way down. There's going to be some new attributes here. NPC action list and legendary action list. And these just hold a vertical bar separated list of the abilities on the actions tab and the legendary action section. And so when we use one of these macros, uh, NPC action again, he'll attack one of these goblins and he will go ahead and use his tail attack on the goblin. So that's where it's getting that drop down list uh, to ask what you would like to do. And again, legendary actions will get the same kind of list. Um, and if an, uh, an action is not directly an attack, you'll just get the description card for that action. So, how does this work with PCs? I am just going to fire up the, the transmogrifier and copy a PC from one of my uh, existing games. And what about here? Our Thursday night game. And let's take. All right, we have a druid here. Come here over to the game. So now we've copied this character over. As soon as I drag her out onto the board, uh, PCM Helper is examining that character and we'll uh, go ahead and create those attributes on that character as well. And so if we use the PC attack button here at the top, uh, she can attack a goblin and she's got two weapons that are available to her. She'll splash with her scimitar and miss. Now where do these come from? We pop over in her character sheet. Uh, PC act attack actions come from this list here uh, the attacks and spell casting. And if an item is marked as an attack, it will show up in that list. Um, the the non-attack spells don't show up in that list simply because we already have another section that's a little more useful for casting spells. If uh, Kara here wants to use one of her cantrips. We can click the canter button, she can use poison spray or shillelagh, we use poison spray, and it will go ahead and generate the card for that cantrip. Uh, the system is smart enough to know that uh, I believe card is level 5 or 6. Uh, level 6, cantrips increase in power at level 5. So if we look at the amount of damage done here, uh, and for some reason in Firefox, whenever I'm really close to the edge, I don't get the hover over. Let me expand this a little bit. Oops. If we look at the hover over here, we can see that um, the base damage is 1d12. Um, and 1d12, because it happened again at 5th level, it goes up at 5th, I think 7th and 11th level cantrips increase in power. So that takes that into account automatically. And it takes the save of the target uh, versus the DC for this spellcaster. And the same thing happens with level one spells and you know all the way up to nine. Uh, when I select the spell here, uh, it will ask me what spell slot level do I want to use. And for some spells this is not critically important, but for other spells obviously they increase in damage as they go up in level. So it's smart enough to know that uh, if you cast a level 3 spell, 
you have to use a minimum self slot of level three, and that would add no additional damage. But if I, you know, this character doesn't have a level nine spell slot, but if she did, uh, it would go ahead and use that spell slot. And um, and again, call lightning doesn't include damage in its descriptor. So let's pop open that character sheet again and take a look at spells. So this character has nothing that is directly rolling damage. It looks like all these spells are uh, um, spell card types. Now, if you saw that here, spell card or attack. Looks like all of her spells are spell cards. But if we give her, um, oh, let's see. Flame strike. All right, so just just make sure this is an attack. It is an attack, so it will show up with the appropriate damage modifiers. So if you see here, higher level casting uh, for every spell slot above fifth level you use here, uh, you add a d6 to the damage, and the base damage is 44 fire and 40. I'm sorry, 46 fire and 46 radiant. So. Just by dragging that spell onto her character sheet, it's updated the list of spells she has available. So we cast a level 5 spell. The only one she has is Flame Strike, so we don't get a drop down list, we just get it already filled in. And then again, it asks us what level spell slot do we want to use. Let's pretend she can use 8th level spells. Flip back over here. And so you can see that, um, and I can parse these out damage 46 at the base for the spell. Uh, plus four times zero because this spell does not include an ability modifier to damage So those cancel each other out and then one times 3d6 because it's a fifth level spell We use an eighth level spell to cast it uh, Slot to cast it so that adds 3d6 to the damage So the final result we see is 46 plus zero four times zero which is zero plus an additional 3d6 and that is the fire damage, and the radiant damage is simply 46. And that's really the system. <clears throat> if you were to add this to an existing game, there's one other command that's useful. Um, I can have any number of tokens highlighted, although if you have a lot of them, it will uh, uh, time out and potentially have to restart your script engine. But the command PCM will tell the script to go ahead and wipe out all the attributes on that character and regenerate them. When we run that, it'll do that in the background. If we come and look at uh, our Druid's character sheet here and the attributes. Again, this works exactly the same way as it does for NPCs. We have the attack list, separated values by vertical bars. Um, we have the cantrip list, Level 1 spell, 2, 3, and we didn't have any 4th level spells, so level 5 spells. And that is really all there is to it. Anything you drag out from the compendium, or any character you edit manually to add abilities, will have uh, those uh, attributes generated on them, so that these macros uh, will work without too much modification. Now, of course, there are some flaky spells that do odd things. Uh, magic Missile produces three missiles, but uh, because they can be individually targeted, uh, I usually just have the person cast it three times. Um, i trying to think. Uh, but yeah, anything we pull out of here, as long as it's in the compendium, uh, the abilities that it has, the actions it has, and any legendary actions, and if it has spells, most monsters, even if they have innate spell casting, do not have a spell list defined. Uh, you can add them uh, um, to a character sheet that supports spells. By default, uh, the unicorn character sheet apparently does not, but of course you can go in and change that. You can uh, have a spell casting NPC, and when we collapse that back down, we will have a spell list down here. And we could give the unicorn a cantrip. And then, of course, if we try and cast the cantrip with the unicorn against the dragon, oh, hasn't updated yet. He has druidcraft. So it takes a couple of seconds to update after you make a change, but uh, it will do it. And then. Uh, 
it'll create uh, the power card on demand for those abilities. So that's pretty much uh, what there is to the system. Uh, obviously, I'm working on refinements and uh, additions over time. I've got a couple ideas for the next set of features I want to add, uh, but I will keep those under wraps for now. And if you try it out, please let me know. Comment on the power card thread on Roll20. And uh, happy gaming.